there comes a time for every man to make amends and right their wrongs. This is a lesson all these programs preach, and it's a lesson they should now follow. My name's Tom, I play drums in Our Dying World. It was actually the Power Rangers movie, believe it or not. Uh, I think my dad took me to that that movie in 1995 or 96, and uh, at the end they were playing uh, Van Halen's uh, Dreams, and I didn't really know, you know, the sound of an electric guitar or what, but I, I think I was just liking it. And uh, yeah, I remember that specifically as like, you know, that's a really, really cool sound. and. Uh, my, my parents were like Irish Catholic and they, they didn't really have much of that in the house, so it was a brand new experience for me. And I don't exactly remember the defining moment of when I wanted to play music. Um, I know that I, I was interested in sounds uh, as a kid. You know, we had a piano in the house, so I was always you know, messing with it. Um, and I think my, my folks got me piano lessons. I wanted, I wanted a set of drums from early on, and my mom was like, I'll get you a set of bongos, because there's no way we're having the drum kit in the house. I was listening to like blues and rock albums. My dad had this, I don't even remember who the artist was. He had a CD of a guy on a motorcycle, and it had this song called Dizzy Miss Lizzie. It was this blues riff with like this killer piano lick and uh, I always used to just run around to that and uh, I think that was again in indicative of my love of rock and, and blues and early on and um, I think that's what kind of got me pushed in the right direction. <laughs> I was 15 years old when I heard metal for the first time, and I was up at boarding school in New York, and on the weekends we were allowed to take out guitar amps and guitars, and um, there, there were these uh, two or three kids in, in the room next to me who were really kind of into um, heavier stuff. You know, at that time it was like metalcore and, you know, Kill Switch Engage, As I Lay Dying, but... Um, one of them busted out the riff to 94 hours by As I Lay Dying, and my ears just went up. I was like, what the hell is this? Like, I need to know what that is. And uh, I actually got in trouble for, for enjoying that little music session so much. They were like, oh, he's, he's, he's getting too far into it and whatever. So um, I got banned from playing guitar for a little while because of that little shenanigan. But uh, that ended up being probably one of the most important moments of leading up to my life because without that riff I never would have discovered any of this. Yeah, but that was the first time I'd heard like death metal growls in 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 music, and I, yeah, I was just crazy about it. I was like, this is the kind of thing I've been wanting to hear my whole life. This one will fucking burn out. <laughs> Biggest influence 
musically is definitely Children of Bodom. Uh, Alexi Leho is by far and large my favorite human being on the planet, or off the planet now, unfortunately. Um, he just had everything about him that I wanted to be for myself. He, he was cool, calm, collected, and he was a fucking rock star. And he played one of the coolest guitars I had ever seen in my life. And uh, he just had it all, man. He had, he had the party style. He had the, the attitude about him. And he just wrote some of the most crazy music I've ever heard. And I, I, I've seen a lot of people come close to what he did, but like nobody ever, nobody ever did what he did except him. And uh, to this day, I mean, all, all, all the stuff I do, all the, the way I dressed myself, it all had something to do with something I saw in him. Um, and he helped me kind of develop myself as a, as a person. <laughs> I started the band because I had been in a couple of uh, projects that, you know, had some promise here in L.A. And um, I moved out here for music school back in 2015. And I wanted to get started with bands right away. I wanted to find people who were serious about playing. And I thought, you know, there's going to be no shortage of that. It's L.A. Well, it turns out there's no shortage of people that want to be in bands, but the amount of people that actually want to do the work to make it happen is far smaller. Um, so I joined a couple bands, I helped start a couple bands, and they all just kind of, um, they rolled along for a couple months, we would play a show or two, and then they would just, people would lose interest. Um, so I decided that, you know, I was tired of waiting on other people to make this happen and I would try my hand at writing music you know being a drummer it was hard to find anybody who would listen to any riffs I had because you know the stereotype uh, he's a drummer he can't write music so um, I decided just to go for it with all the skills I had and the stuff I had at my disposal why not give it a shot <laughs> It's hard getting people to have faith in a project that you haven't heard. So these guys, you know, they pretty much said, okay, you do you and we'll see what happens when it's done. And uh, when Ex Expedition was finished, it was a really great product, at least for, you know, first EP. Um, and uh, the lineup got shifted uh, during some years of personal development, but uh, it ended up sticking around as a full-time project. And, uh, you know, I'm super grateful of how it happened and how we pulled everybody together to bring this crazy thing to life. Um, I certainly didn't think it would go as big as it did or have the sound that we have now because it's beyond anything I could have asked for, that's for sure. Well, we just released Hymns of Blinding Darkness, and we've got a release show coming up, and we just want to keep pushing the envelope. I mean, it seems like we've had a pretty positive response to everything that we've released so far, and some of it more enthusiasm than others, but ultimately no one was saying we wrote anything bad. Um, so for me, that gives a lot of high hopes that in the future we've got much more music of a higher caliber coming um, now that we've kind of settled into the group that we are now um, I think that we're we're pretty much set up to do a killer record on the next run but until then we're just going to keep playing our asses off trying to play bigger and bigger shows and um, that's all I can hope for for sure holy fucking shit you saw that, man. I am David from Out Dying World. What do you do in the band? I'm the vocal. Hi, I'm Lee. <laughs> <laughs> that was aggressive. Take I'm two. I'm from Out Dying World. <laughs> you know what I do. You've seen me before. <laughs> Take two. Click. Hi, I'm David from uh, the vocalist from Our Dying World. <laughs> Take my, take my. 
earliest musical memory. My earliest musical memory is, uh, was I don't even know if it was a video at the time. I was like three years old and my parents bought me a little guitar, uh, like a plastic guitar thing and a guitar and amp and my dad was in a band and I wrote a song at like three years old about my mom and dad going to work. So I've kind of, you know, I was on stage with my dad as a ch small little kid. So I've pretty much been on stage my entire life. If you know this song, fucking tear this place apart. Let's fucking go. Uh, it's been in my blood. My, you know, dad was a musician, kind of just been around it the whole time, and I've never felt the pull to do anything else. They always ask that dumb question of what you see yourself doing in five years, and playing music's the only answer I've ever had. I was about three years old when I first started playing, going back to that, but I mean, like, I've always had the drive to do it, just never had the, you know, people to do it with. Got in high school, I was like 15, I was like, all right, time to start a band. Just listening to music the whole time, headphones and all that stuff with the Walkman, dating myself, um, you know, just always performing, getting the guitar, performing in front of the mirror, you know, just always kind of had that goal of this is the only thing I can see myself ever doing. <laughs> Classifying heavy metal is kind of a, a weird thing throughout the generations. Um, heavy metal in itself, I would say it was mm, 10th or 11th grade. My buddy in, in gym class showed me Slayer. And I uh, just, that, that was, because before that, it was like, I watched wrestling, and when I heard Bret Hart's intro and just the guitar screech at the beginning, I was like, this is all about me. And then later on, still wrestling, when Disturbed did Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme song, I was like hooked as to like new metal or alternative heavier stuff. And then from there, it went into, you know, he introduced me to Slayer, the first three albums I Th first three metal albums I ever bought was Behemoth's Demigod, Slayer, Raining Blood, and uh, Black Dahlia Murder. It was the, the Black album. I can't remember the name of it. Um, Unhallowed, or I think is what it was called. But that was the first actual metal albums I bought. <laughs> Biggest musical influence as far as like a vocalist and how my vocals came to be um, would have to be like, as far as the, the, the chorus and heavy vocals would have to be uh, probably Corey Taylor from Slipknot is a big one. Um, just being able to filter through cleans, cleans into heavy vocals. Um, Jesse from Killswitch Engage is a very big influence. And as many people have commented, uh, Randy Blythe apparently. <laughs> But yeah, Randy Bly from Lamb of God is, is who I was like, this is who I want to sound like. As far as going forward, I, you know, my influences change and I want to like sound like different people, not like sound like them, but, you know, take what they have and like implement it. Um, Peter from Hypocrisy and Bloodbath is kind of who I'm like, that, that's the style I want, like the, the, the just whole tonality of that. <laughs> I ended up in ODW because of a Craigslist ad. Um, I had just moved to California, um, just put out ads in Craigslist and stuff, just metal singer looking for a band, list, listing all of my influences from Lamb of God to Whitechapel to Opeth. Um, 
And then I get a message from Tom saying he's putting something together, and I'm like, cool, send it to me when you get it ready. Because at this point, I'm just fielding applications. I'm just like, whoever's got their shit most together is who's going to get me kind of a thing. So we'll go, we'll try it out, and I'll try anything twice. So um, he said, you know, I showed him some videos. He was like, you're the guy. Off of like two videos from another band I was doing while I was out in Santa Barbara. And... Um, he sent me a guitar lick, and I was like, that's a pretty cool lick, but, you know, guitar is kind of, let's see what happens when the drums come into it. And then uh, eventually it just kind of got, went from there and, you know, stuck around, took a little bit of a break right before the pandemic started, you know, and kind of like, and then got hit back up to like, hey, we're redoing the thing. You obviously have first take. I'm like, cool, let's do that. And here we are now. What can our fans expect from us next? Hell, I don't even know what to expect from us next. So it's just kind of like, you know, we went from Expedition and it was a drastic change to the new album, Hymns of Blinding Darkness. So next album, I'm expecting probably to stay on the same road, but we might, you know, take a couple detours and try some other like new stuff and just see what we can come up with. Because as far as me, it's like I want to I like to take different aspects of different things and combine them all together in one song. So I like to you know be genre bending or or as the is 2022 genre fluid. You know, we're genre fluid, I would say. I like I like to, you know, take take a bunch of cool shit from a bunch of other styles and throw them all into one song. Hi, I'm Graham. I am the keyboardist and orchestrator for Art Dying World. The very earliest one is, uh, I was uh, like three years, like two years old. Uh, so it's not, I, this is more of an attestation from my parents is that I was uh, in my high chair watching Fantasia and I was pretending to conduct to it, to the original Fantasia. And uh, then uh, beyond that, that I actually remember is uh, uh, my dad, uh, he does trombone and um, he, uh, he was good friends with the guy who actually wrote the uh, Survivor, uh, who wrote the, um, you know, the song that was placed in Rocky. And uh, he's got a side band, this guy who did the Rocky song, he's got a side band called Ides of March, and my dad would play in that band as a guest trombonist when they came into town. And yeah, that was probably my biggest, my earliest uh, exposure to that scene. What, one of the things that made me want to first start playing music is, um, you know, when I was... Uh, starting from an early age, I, w I would play, I was a video game fan. Uh, my first game I played was Super Mario 64. The first song I was probably wowed by absolutely was uh, the Dire Dire Docks theme in Super Mario 64. I was just like, I just listen to that still to this day. Um, and uh, I was just like, uh, went on to other video game soundtracks like Spyro the Dragon, um, some of the Kirby soundtracks, and they all got this they all had this kind of like influence of like progressive rock music in there. And I didn't even know what that was at the time, but that was, I guess the magic in that, in those soundtracks was just subconsciously boiling in my, the back of my mind. And then once I finally found that genre, I was like, oh my God, that sounds like the soundtracks I listened to as a kid playing these video games. And, and I don't know, it, that all kind of just built and festered into, I want to do this. I want to make this like cool otherworldly stuff. Um. <laughs> When I first started playing music, I was about, I want to say, started taking piano lessons about 11 years old or so. And um, yeah, the teacher was, uh, I had was really cool because he was not like um, a full on traditionalist piano teacher. You know, the stereotype is, okay, I want you to focus this whole hour on your posture and everything. And we covered that for sure, but you know, he, he really helped me in like teaching me music theory, composition. He's like, hey, you got any ideas you've been working on? 
riffs you've been working on let's work on that and i'd show him like he was really open to stuff too he like i would come to him i remember when i was 14 years old 15 years old was like hey I, i'm trying to learn this demu borgir song can you can you help me out with that and he's like he'd never heard that stuff before and he was like yeah let's go for it and um so yeah that really encouraged me so the first i i want to say like proto metal band i i I guess was a uh, creed when I was like 10 years old and then from there that like I started listening to like Alien Ant Farm and then when I was like 13 I heard Slipknot for the first time I was like oh my goodness this is this is something else um uh going back to the Super Mario 64 example again that's probably the very first metal song was the Bowser battle theme it's done with like MIDI guitars and stuff but it, it's definitely metal it's like this groovy like semi thrashy thing and again, that was probably that, that initial like spark that subconsciously set me off on this path. Um, a lot of things lead back to that soundtrack of that game, I feel like. Um, so yeah, that was first real metal band probably for me was like Slipknot. And then from there went on to like Children of Bodom. And it was like, oh my God, you can do all these things with keyboards. Then from there, like Dream Theater, Symphony X. Um, yeah, that was my trajectory. So would you say those Super Mario games had the biggest influence over your... It, it, it seems like everything leads back to that, in a way. <laughs> I don't know, the Super Mario 64, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and then of course, like the... That composer, I mean, is a big influence of mine, uh, Koji Kondo. Like the Majora's Mask is probably my favorite. Um, like I, I work a day job as a, a composer for games and uh, film as well, in addition to this band. Um, and so that's very much part of my repertoire as well. The way I ended up in Our Dying World was Tom put on one of those Facebook groups, like California Musicians or something like that, looking for a metal keyboardist. And he also said, while you're at it, can anyone direct me to a unicorn? Because apparently that's like rare um, <laughs> metal keyboardist, I guess. So I just like raised my hand immediately. He's like, oh, I do this, this, and this. And he was like, oh, that's exactly what we're going for. Like, like my favorite band, probably metal-wise, is Cholner Bodum and Demu Borgir. I listed all those things. He was like, that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, I showed up to audition, and we, when we were all like sound checking and stuff. He was like, okay, Graham, play something. We're sound checking you. I played like Morning Palace by Demu Borgir. And he was like, I, I, I think you got the job. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was, that was how that went, how that uh, transpired. We're going to um, continue to try to play bigger and bigger shows. Um, we're immediately having completed this uh, Hymns of Blinding Darkness record. We're immediately formulating ideas for the next one. And you know we're throwing all sorts of, we want to keep that um, core, I think, um, the kind of melodic death sound, but we want to throw even more experimental things into the mix. I myself am a big fan of like the uh, modes of limited transposition, the whole tone scales, diminished scales, um, extended techniques like 12 tone serialism. So hopefully we can throw some more esoteric stuff in there, here and there, throw some black metal influences here and there, just really throw more stuff into this blender of ours um, while still keeping that core identity. Hi, I'm Nick from Our Dying World, and I play bass. So my first earliest musical memory was probably listening to my sister's albums in her house when I was about seven or eight. She had a pretty healthy album collection of like Beatles and Led Zeppelin and kind of basically your basic classic rock standard fare. So a lot of Led Zeppelin, a lot of Beatles, a lot of Who, that sort of thing. <laughs> I think the first thing that made me want to start playing music is kind of actually in about junior high, I went to a couple of different musical performances with my parents and they, uh, from that, I just, I don't know, I really got, I just really got bit by the musical bug, even though my parents weren't super musical, but they liked, they appreciated music, but they didn't really have any 
musical talent in the family. So I was essentially the first one who ever actually really wanted to play an instrument in my family. I first started playing an instrument when I was about eight and um, probably what most people get you know, kind of forced into is I took piano lessons and then um, didn't really, piano didn't really jive with me, but you know, now as an adult, I look back at those and go, God, I wish I had stuck with it because it'd be awesome to rip on a piano. But um, yeah, so I think, yeah, piano was definitely my first musical instrument. <laughs> I first started listening to metal when I was in like junior high, high school area. Um, I had a lot of friends and back at that time, so it was a lot of the early 80s metal. So it was a lot of like Judas Priest and Dio and Bon Jovi and Skid Row and you know, just kind of like the early 80s metal stuff. And, and I was just hooked from that point onward. Um, one of my best friends in high school was a huge King Diamond fan. And I just, from then on, I was just like everything King Diamond did, I had to, I was like just, enthralled with. So my biggest musical influence is, well, of current musicians is probably Michael Pond from Symphony X. Um, in fact, all the guys in Symphony X are just huge musical influences. Um, their music is just absolutely outstanding. And on top of it, they're some of the nicest humans you'll ever meet. Um, other bands, um, hugely influenced by King Diamond, of course, um, hugely influenced by uh, Steve Vai, just from his pure technicality and his originality and creativity when it comes to <clears throat> just forging his own path in music and doing whatever the, the hell he wants, you know, regardless of whether anybody else likes it or not. So, the way um, I ended up in OD Dub is I ended up uh, playing in a band with Tom previous to Our Dying World, and unfortunately it didn't really go anywhere, but Tom and I remained friends out of it, and then I got a phone call from Tom, I don't know, uh, weeks or months or years, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how long the time period was after the uh, end of the previous band, and he said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm starting up my own band, I've got some ideas, you know, would you be interested? And I'm sure I was like, probably most other people was like, well, yeah, I, I would be interested, but you know, I got, you know, let me hear what you got. I want to see what you're, where you're thinking about going with it. And uh, it was great. So I was like, yeah, sign me up. So I think people can expect from us um, we've kind of set off on a new path um, with our latest album, Hymns of Blinding Darkness, that's kind of taken us in a new musical direction, and I'm, I'm hoping that as we continue to write more songs, we're going to evolve and keep going down this path that we have kind of started for ourselves. Um, I feel like this album is just really like the beginning of this journey, it's not the end, so I'm actually really excited to see where we're going to end up an album or two albums from now based on kind of these new elements that we're bringing into the music. I'm Austin, and I play guitar in Our Dying World. So, earliest musical memory from my dad's account, uh, I was like nine months old, just learning how to walk, and he was playing uh, the album Antichrist Superstar by Marilyn Manson on full blast. And as a baby, all I did was I put my face headfirst into the speaker, and just let it blast me in the face. But that's not what I remember, that's what my dad remembers. My earliest musical memory was my mom taking me to X Games when I was super young, because we I was super into dirt bikes when I was a kid. And uh, basically they had the video for Black Sabbath, uh, the Paranoid video, and Tony Iommi was playing on there, and I'm like, that's a guitar. And yeah, that's pretty much the earliest I could think of. Well, maybe I want to start playing music was initially that Tony Iommi video. And then shortly after, um, I got money for my birthday, so I went to Best Buy 
and the band Cradle of Filth just released their album Midian, and that was the first album I ever bought. So I was like five years old, and I listened to that on the way home. I'm like, I want to do that. And so that was, yeah, that 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 did it. <laughs> First started playing roughly around that Cradle Filth album. Um, we went to Magic Mountain, and you know those like games where it's like rigged, there's no way you can win? They had a Batman guitar, and it was cool because it was a guitar and it was Batman, so I'm like, yes. So basically, um, I made my mom sink like 60 bucks into this game that I couldn't win, and she's like, fuck, never mind, I'll just buy you a guitar, what are we doing? And so, yeah, she bought me a guitar. It was acoustic, I wanted to do on a, not an acoustic, on a pointy guitar like this one. So then they got me an electric like shortly a year afterwards. And from there on, took lessons from an awesome teacher named Jim Swartz. And yeah, that was cool. That's a hard one. <laughs> um, for guitar, it's easily Dimebag uh, from Pantera. Uh, all my like my techniques on riffing and all that kind of stuff, I base a lot off of him. And then uh, musically, it's whoever the fuck I want to listen to. Like earliest one is Cradle, and then I got super into Slipknot, super and then super into Pantera. Uh, the SpongeBob episode where Pantera was featured, that was the first thing I learned how to like gallop to, like, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, it's pretty much anything I'm into. By pure chance. So, uh, I went to go see Swallow the Sun. I already, I was planning, I was already planning to see Swallow the Sun play the show at the Whiskey. And then it just so happened I saw Our Dying World was opening. And I'm like, I know those guys. Or at least I, I knew Ray and Tom pretty well. Um, so I wanted to go support my friends. And... As far as I knew, Tom was playing guitar in this band. So when I see Tom unloading drums, I'm like, this does not compute. So I ask, why are you unloading drums? And he answers, because I'm the drummer now. And I'm like, oh no. All I said was, if you need help. I didn't mean if you need help playing. I said, if you need help. I meant if you need help fighting another guitar player. He took that as, okay, cool. Can you show up to practice? <laughs> and I don't think I even really auditioned. I think I showed up, played a couple songs and they're like, cool, you wanna play the show? I'm like, uh, sure. So literally just by pure chance, I, I joined. And so like that show where I was going to see him open, I was like sitting right in front of Ray, watching intently, but like, what are these fucking riffs? Riffs, riff salad, my friend. Basically how I see it, I'm the newest member. So if the next album sucks, it's my fault. So I'm gonna do my best to give it my best in input, which is probably gonna be more black metal stuff. So that'll be cool. Um, other than that, it's gonna pretty much be on the same trajectory as our uh, most recent album, Hymns of Blinding Darkness, shameless plug. And uh, yeah, so what we have right now, but possibly darker. No, not even possibly, definitely darker. Yeah. Like how much darker? Uh, uh, the deepest, deepest, darkest part, like the Mariana Trench, that dark. That's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. Hi, my name is Ray. I play guitar for Our Dying World. My earliest musical memory, I must credit to two people, my dad and my aunt. Dad, because he would take me in the backseat of his Corvette and blare Van Hagar as loud as it can go. And, um, you know, to this day, it's just a beautiful, sentimental thing to me. Anything from that era. Um, and my aunt, because... She was just a big Alice in Chains fan, Chris Cornell, anything like that. Um, so driving down Sacramento by the river and everything like that and just wind blowing through your hair and just, you know, the, the entire Balance album just from start to finish is just a, just a beautiful thing.
there's a very specific memory that I have as far as uh, the beginnings of music because before that it was just something that was cool that I didn't really get I, did, I just didn't really un understand what it was um, I actually wanted to be a motocross racer for the longest time and I was riding bikes with a friend of mine his name was Trey and um, I think I almost got hit by a car that day and so I freaked out when we went to his house and he had this first stacked in his garage it had like three strings on it and so he takes it and, you know, when you have a guitar in your hands, you just feel cooler than you actually are. So we're just, you know, kind of throwing it around and he plays uh, Deep Purple Smoke on the Water on the low E string with his thumb on like the three and five and six. <laughs> and um, prior to, the, to that, and really still to this day, I, I just, I, I'm not talented. I really have to work hard at everything that I do. <laughs> and um, for some reason, when I saw him do that, he gave the guitar to me, and then I did it. And he was kind of surprised, as was I, because he said, I thought you never played before. And I said, I, I haven't, really. And uh, I spent two to three hours in that garage just doing that over and over again. And something clicked inside of me, and I just, I, I don't know what it was. Uh, I don't even know what you would attribute it to, like, you know, uh, the the hero of the movie finding his weapon or you know the the janitor finding a broom for the first time or something like that um but that's that's what it was and ever since then uh it's the the bug bit me hard and it it just uh hasn't let up and i haven't allowed it to let up so it's partly my fault <laughs> I was 12 years old when I first started, and um, I remember a few days after I found that guitar in his garage, uh, my mom went to a pawn shop, and uh, she got me a little, no, it, it was a flea market. She went to a flea market and got me a $20 classical guitar, and I just failed <laughs> over and over again until I got what I considered to be even remotely correct, which it, in reality was not. But um, yeah, 12 years old, and um, I think I turned 13 shortly thereafter. So 12, 13 years old, and I'm 30 now. So math. <laughs> In, in actuality, I was very young um, when I first heard it. I, I had to have been in, in, in the tens. I mean, my dad was blaring Metallica's S&M record uh, since I was in the womb. Um, my mom was more on the, uh, on the alternative uh, R&B hip hop type side. But my dad, I have to accredit him for that because uh, while my aunt was into like, you know, rock and roll and stuff like that, like Journey was one of her favorite bands, but metal, very specifically was was the old man and uh his influence kind of led me to uh one particular day when i was at my friend eric's and we had a computer and youtube was like just kind of starting and we just fell down a rabbit hole man and he was just kind of like a, the the anarchist type and stuff like that so he's like dude have you heard cannibal corpse and i was like what is that and so it was in a day Rammstein, Cannibal Corpse, Exodus, Slayer, Meshuggah, and we just video after video after video, and we're sitting there in his parents' study, just like, what is this? I don't even understand. And he had a drum set in his room, and all I know is Stevie Ray Vaughan up to this point, I, and like, I think Metallica is just the heaviest thing ever, and the universe just went, you're so incorrect, it's not even funny. And that led to Pantera and Decapitated and just... <laughs> Anything you could imagine. As far as influences, I, I usually make the joke that all my heroes are dead, which really is very much true. I mean, as far as living people, um, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone 
living really influences um, other than just, you know, Austin or Graham or Tom or just the, the people that I'm surrounded by. Because uh, they influence me a lot, to be, to be honest. Um, but I have to bring it back to the roots and say my friend Rob, who I grew up with, who was a big mentor of mine. He'll, he'll never say that, but he, he was. And um, he taught me everything about vibrato and like what that is and just, you know, getting to the real soul of an instrument. So um, every time I see him and we hang out, I mean, I just, I, I, I learned something new. And that's not to say that there's not totally respectable and uh, vir virtuosic players out there because there absolutely is. But as far as who I look at and admire, um, you know, besides Stevie Ray and Rory Gallagher, B.B. King, uh, Brent Mason, Brad Paisley, stuff like that, it's it's my friend Rob and the guys in the band, uh, Graham especially. I mean, he's just he just makes everyone else a better musician. And uh, whenever I learn his stuff, I'm just it's just a whole new world. <laughs> So I ended up in ODW um, almost by accident because I was asked to do a guest spot on a song that I thought was really, really cool, still do to this day. And I believe out of respect for Tom's time, which I consider of the utmost value, he, he asked me to join after, you know, the session was done. And I just said no because I didn't want to make a promise that I couldn't uh, commit to. Fast forward, um, I don't know if it was years later or months later, but uh, another band I'm in had lost their drummer, and I saw Tom on a job that I was on with our friend Andrew, and uh, recognized him, and, and uh, we just kind of hit it off again, uh, because he's just a immediately likable dude, and he said, yeah, like, you know, still trying to, you know, look for stuff, and I thought about it and I went, wait, Tom, you're a, you're a drummer, right? And he goes, yeah. And we had a all scratch your back if you scratch mine kind of moment. And uh, he joined my other band as well. And then I joined uh, Our Dying World. So it was kind of a trade off. What can the fans expect? Um, I could tell you what I hope to hear. I hope that we continue on the path of everyone's opinion counts. Uh, no idea goes unheard. I am very much hoping to get Austin in the forefront way more than he is. I'm, I'm definitely, even if it's just like Austin just takes a lead in a song uh, by himself because the kid is just a fleet fingered bastard and I love him. Um, I so much want to hear Graham's influence on things because when we took what we had and we gave it to Graham as what is a part of the course, he just completely revolutionizes it. So, in short, I, I think you can hear a more focused version on what you hear on hymns of blinding darkness. Um, and I think that we're, we, we, we have our sound, and I think we're just going to focus more on that. So, orchestration, heavy riffs, um, good production, and ultimately you're going to hear music that is played by human beings. So, you know, hopefully not absolutely perfect snap to a grid i mean it's you're you're gonna hear human beings playing uh music um from lived experience and and from the heart what's this fucking song called
Thank you so much for coming out! We hope to see you again! The Noodle! You guys mean the fucking world to us! Thank you so much! Oh my god! Oh my god! Thank you all! For everybody! Fucking everybody! There comes a time for every man to make amends and right their wrongs. This is a lesson all these programs preach, and it's a lesson they should now follow.